what's up? It's Maria. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do like a New York City travel guide. I just got back from New York City. It was the best trip of my life. I did so much cool stuff. I had such a good time. I ate such good food. The food in New York is the best part about New York. I had such good food. I'm like reminiscing about how good the food was and the food was great. I want to give you guys like a little travel guide to New York because if you don't know what you're doing in New York, you can get really lost. Everything can end up being a lot of money and you'll spend a lot of time like while you're there. You could be doing stuff, trying to research stuff to do. So I just thought I'd give you just like a couple ideas so then you can get to New York. Just have the best trip of your life because it, honestly, it was the best trip I've ever been on in my entire life. I had so much fun and I think city vacations are the best vacations that you can do because they're like in the city and there's stuff to do. We'll just get right into the tips and we're gonna start out in the food realm. Everyone's favorite realm. I think food was my favorite part about the entire trip and I think when you think New York you think about like pizza and ice cream and all the really awesome places. I'm just gonna give you like my top three or four favorite places that we went and some advice as far as picking restaurants in New York. There's pretty much like something for everyone in New York like when you're trying to figure out somewhere to eat they have Indian, they have Asian, there's also a lot of kosher, there's a lot of vegan, there's gluten free restaurants, there's French, Italian, like literally anything you could think of New York has a restaurant for it so we definitely didn't have a hard time finding places. The hardest part itself was picking places to go. I'm already like terribly indecisive, so it took us like hours to pick places to go. So we were in Greenwich Village, a place that was really close to our hotel was this place called Banter. It's like an Australian healthy-ish cafe. My dad calls it girlish food because it's like avocado toast and smoothie bowls and stuff like that. And this cafe was so good. The vibe in there was really nice and also all the waiters were hot Australian men, so we weren't mad about that. I had, I think, the best piece of avocado toast I've ever had in my entire life. I just really liked it. It was a really good cafe and if you're looking for like a good like healthy quick brunchy breakfast sort of place, Banter is definitely the place to go. As far as dinner goes, my favorite dinner that I had was also quote unquote girlish food. We ate at this place called Little Beat Table. It's a vegan, vegetarian, healthy choice sort of place. I had the vegan miso tofu. Not really sure exactly what it was, but it was so good. And my mom and my sister both had really good salads. And they had a lot of other options, like they had burgers and salmon and stuff like that. So there definitely are options for everyone. But especially if you're looking for like a healthy vegan sort of choice, Little Beat Table is a really good place to go. And as for dessert, you really can't go wrong with any kind of dessert in New York. All the food, especially the desserts, are really, really good. My favorite that we went to was dough, which is a cookie dough bar. I love raw things. I will eat raw bread dough, raw cake batter, raw brownie batter. Like, I know I'm probably going to get salmonella at one point in my life. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I love raw dough. So when we went to this cafe and they had like raw dough just to eat and it was edible and it was literally the only thing that they had, I was like... Oh my god, I found my Mecca. It was like the best moment of my life. I ended up having like a lot of dough and I felt really sick afterward, but it was definitely a place that I would suggest going to. I really don't think that there's a bad choice that you can make with any of their cookie doughs. They're all so good. I got two scoops. My sister got two scoops and I finished one of her scoops because she couldn't eat two scoops. So like if you're not like a normal dough lover, I'd say just do one scoop, but I definitely did two, maybe three. I'm not really sure how much it ended up being. Another dessert place that was really good that's kind of on the low low in New York is this place place called 16 Handles. It's just a frozen yogurt store. They had some of the best frozen yogurt flavors I think I've ever had in my entire life. And this place is like scattered all around New York. There's a lot of 16 Handles. But the specific one we went to had toppings like lemon pound cake, you know, from dough that you could put on your ice cream. And it was so tasty. It was the best frozen yogurt I've ever had in my life, especially because I put like an entire slice of lemon pound cake on top of my ice cream. If you are anywhere in New York, I highly suggest going to 16 Candles because it is so delicious. So yeah. That's pretty much all the food places that I suggest. There definitely are a lot more. Um, I really wanted to go to, I think it's called Big Daddy's. I'm not really sure, but it's Post Malone's favorite diner and I really wanted to go, but we didn't end up getting a chance. Oh! One more thing, if you are looking for a rainbow bagel and you don't want to cross over into Brooklyn, so if you're staying on, I think it's like the main New York island, I don't know, I'm not really good with geography, but there's like a big island and then there's like an island that Brooklyn is on. I'm not sure what either of them are called. The one that we were on was like the long skinny one where pretty much like Times Square, Central Park, like everything is. 
and Brooklyn was where like I really wanted a rainbow bagel like my thing was like I really wanted to get a rainbow bagel when I was in New York because they're like an Instagram thing but we ended up finding this place in Manhattan called Bagel Boss and they had the rainbow bagels and they were so good so if you're in New York and you want a rainbow bagel and you're not staying anywhere near Brooklyn highly suggest going to Bagel Boss because the bagel was delicious and it was rainbow that was a really good place I highly suggest going there okay as far as location goes there is really not a bad spot per se to stay in New York but I highly suggest staying more on the upper not upper half but I wouldn't stay down near Battery Park Battery Park and that area is good to travel to to go see like the Statue of Liberty and ride the Staten Island Ferry but I wouldn't stay in that lower part and I also wouldn't stay in the most northern part of New York so it's like Harlem I think the Bronx is up there, I'm not too sure, but really everything that you need is in like that middle section from like Central Park down. We stayed in Greenwich Village, which is like the cutest little town. It's right next to NoHo and SoHo, which are like shopping districts in New York. I'd say that was my favorite area because there was really good food, there was a lot of shopping, and a lot of the places that you saw on Instagram were there. And I also thought it was one of the more lively parts of New York, so I really enjoyed being there. If you travel a little bit further up to Times Square and Central Park area would be like Park Avenue places like that like it's a little bit more bougie a little bit more expensive so if you want like a nicer stay I definitely suggest staying in that area I feel like more the tourists stay in the upper part because it is near Times Square Empire State Building Flatiron Building Central Park like that area the upper part of Manhattan is really good to stay in if you want to do more touristy stuff but I feel like if you want a more local experience everything is really central I'd stay in Greenwich Village because literally everything was at the most a 20 minute drive from us obviously in traffic it gets a little bit hectic but there was nothing that we relate to and we could walk to most things so I definitely suggest staying in the Greenwich Village area and as far as traveling goes I I highly suggest getting a subway pass. We didn't ride the subway until the last day that we were there and that was an utter mistake. Let me tell you, we spent like almost like a thousand dollars Ubering everywhere. Where was I going? I have like a brain for it now. Oh, um... So yeah, we ended up Ubering everywhere and we spent like a lot of money and that was just not a vibe. I highly suggest getting a subway pass. The subway I think is like $2.75 a trip. Don't quote me on that, I'm not from New York, I don't really know. But it's really fast, it's really convenient, there's subways everywhere and it's so much cheaper than Ubering everywhere. Uh, it was a little bit intimidating the first time that we went down there, but after a couple of rides it was totally fine and I felt completely comfortable on the subway. The other thing that I wanted to suggest is that you are going to be walking literally everywhere. We got like days where we were walking 20,000 steps, like over 7 miles a day because it was so much cheaper and honestly it was faster just to walk everywhere. You will save so much money, you will save so much of your time if you just walk everywhere and you got to see like more parts of the city than you would have if you went in like a cab and stuff like that. As far as things to do go, uh, there's so many things to do in New York. I highly suggest taking a tour of the city, like being in a tour group. I mean, you could do it all yourself, but you don't really know where you're going, and you're also going to get so much more information from a local if you go on a tour. So we went on the New York One tour. We didn't have to do any navigating. We never got lost. He told us lots of fun facts about the city, and we got to see Times Square. We went on the Staten Island Ferry. We saw the Statue of Liberty. We went to Wall Street. We did, like, all this stuff. Stuff, all in a matter of like I think it was five hours the tour was so yeah the tour was really nice just to go around and just to see the whole city and get a lot of information about it and know what parts that we wanted to go back to like we agreed we wanted to go back to Times Square we wanted to go back to Central Park and the other thing that we wanted to go back to was the Statue of Liberty this is key if you're going to go to the Statue of Liberty you need to buy your tickets ahead of time because you can bypass the entire line into security there's like a group of people who are standing this long to get into security Security, and this is the group of people who have their tickets ahead of time. It saved us so much time and we were on the boat in no time. And I highly suggest doing the Liberty Tour without going up into the Statue of Liberty because it's honestly the same view and if you go buy your tickets ahead of time and you don't need to do the up into the crown part. The other thing that we bought tickets ahead of time for was the Empire State Building. We didn't really need to buy tickets ahead of time because we ended up going at night. I highly suggest going at night because the views from the top of the building are beautiful beautiful at night. You can see the entire city lighting up. So there weren't actually that many people there when we went because it was like 
9 p.m. at night. We didn't really use our tickets that we bought ahead of time, but I'd still say like have them as like a safety net in case you go at a crowded time, so then you won't be standing there waiting in line forever. Just a piece of advice. The last thing I want to say as far as things to do goes is Soho. One of the biggest things on our list was shopping in Soho because like I, I'm a Gucci girl at heart. I just wanted to go to all the designer stores. Jesus Christ. I just wanted to go to all the, all, all the, I just wanted to go to like all the designer stores and shop around. So they're shopping in Soho and then they're shopping in like Upper Manhattan. But we definitely like wanted to go to Soho because it's like, it's like iconic. So we ended up going after dinner, which was a mistake. Do not go after dinner because everything closes at like 8 o'clock in Soho. If you're going to go to Soho and go shopping, you have to go during the day. If you go at night, everything is closed and you'll have to pee and you'll be walking around for like 20 minutes trying to find a place to pee and you'll end up walking like two miles just to find a Bloomingdale's where they got mad at you for peeing. But yeah, if you want to go to Soho, go during the day because then you can actually shop in Soho, so that's pretty much it. I feel like that's everything in my travel guide. I think my biggest piece of advice for going to New York is just be prepared to walk a lot. You will not get everywhere by cab. You are crazy if you think that you can get everywhere by driving because you just can't. You will walk a lot. Anyway, that is everything that I wanted to cover in this travel guide. I think Probably editing Maria will think of something that she wanted to add and then we will add it in, but that's fine. It's like, it's chill. I will see you guys in the next video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this one. Also, I'm sorry about all the hand motions. Like, I felt like I was like a sorcerer throughout the entire video. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. If you liked it, please leave a thumbs up. And I come back here every single Monday at 3 o'clock is when I upload. Every single Monday at the same exact time. I know, I'm great. I don't even, you don't even have to subscribe. I mean, you should, but you can't, you... I'll see you guys in the next video.